Um, I did think it was very interesting how at the beginning of this movie when, cause it just cuts right to the, the strike right at the beginning of the movie, right. Where the owner is meeting with Gene Hackman's character and he's like, Oh, you know, all these babies that drive Lamborghinis and stuff want more money. How ridiculous is this? And the, the movie very much has that tone that all these players are these spoiled rotten babies. <laughs> it felt like the movie was written by an owner. <laughs> yeah. Because it really the, the billionaires complaining about the millionaires is hilarious. back welcome back to the movie dad's podcast we're your hosts i'm howie i'm kyle and that's kyle he's trying to catch him slipping i was like anyway yeah that's free are we going or is it we... broken <laughs> is the screen broken um anyway yeah welcome back to the movie dad's podcast episode number 60 oh my goodness wild the 2000 sports comedy classic the replacements for this week's you need to see this movie. We're Gosh, getting ready for football season. I, so I hadn't seen it in years. Man, what a movie. It's so good. I was it's so it. good. It's so, so good. good. It's lots it's to a, talk about. <clears throat> it's obviously it's hilarious, but it's also like just it's uplifting. Get you it's like hopeful. It's a weird thing to say, but I enjoy it a lot. Yeah, so. we'll survive. Nice. Anyway, uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, please click the like and subscribe. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. Make sure you click that bell to get notifications on when new episodes come out, which is on Wednesdays. We try to shoot for 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. If we got paid, we'd probably make sure that that happens. It's two weeks in a row I've said that. Um, you know, we I'm should just, make like a Patreon. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Maybe all our fans in Australia who are watching. Yeah, shout out Down to under. People of Br Brisbane and Queensland, apparently. Good day, uh, mate. We are, it, we've made it. We, we, hit, we hit something in Australia because we had some people download the podcast last week all the way down under. Vegemite. Boston. And we just lost all of them now. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. Oh, way oh, to go. I've got and, friends down in Perth. Well, Perth. So shout out to my, my Aussie homies. Yeah, it's, it's weird because it's like half, it's half. Half of our podcast downloads are in the United States, and then Germany, mm. like a bunch of music. <laughs> hey, we'll take shout out. What's up? And then Australia, and then Singapore. Yeah, that was the Singapore. I and mean, then, honestly, all of them. You know, like, what? Yeah, and then there was just a bunch of like one-offs, like France and Italy and Brazil. Right, okay, hey. So, someone who lives in Colorado today told me that they're our number one fan. So I'm like, okay. They showed up on that little list too. So well, yeah. shout out to you fans. And we're only going up. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for listening or watching, mostly listening, which is fine. I, uh, I think about boy. that often of like mo a lot, most anyone or most everyone that listens to the pod don't even watch like the YouTube video. So they right. don't even see us. That's yeah. I haven't listened to it anywhere other than on YouTube. Hmm. I listen to it on Spotify usually. Nice. That's where most people listen to it too. Spotify. I thought that was a, another interesting. Right. Not very many people listen to it on Apple. It's like Spotify, Spotify, and then um, like a bunch of different podcast things that I don't didn't never heard of. Anyway, mm. enough about enough you're, about that. You're here nor there. Enough about that. Uh, yeah. Um, but we're movie dads. We've got movie kids uh, this week. Softball is back. So we had a double header. I think I talked about it last week, but Reagan's age group. Um, I don't, maybe I didn't talk about it because we kind of went through that part really fast. But so softball in the fall. So Reagan turned 13 in the spring. So she was allowed to play in the 12 year old group still because she turned 13 during the season. So it was okay. But she had to move to the next age group for the fall which it was like 9 10 then it's 11 12 now it's 13 to 18 so it's oh, like shit. Yeah, that's it's, a big jump it's a big age group so most of the kids on the team all aged out at the same time even the coach's daughter so she's got the same coach so she's going to still have the same coach because he moved oh. age groups too which oh, is great because cool. jack's nice. awesome we, he's a great coach. The competition level has increased dramatically. And <laughs> when 
like 75% of the team is all these girls that just like turn 13. It's mm. tough. So the first two games they lost 12 to four and like 13 to nothing or the first Damn. two games. Then this week, the first game is a doubleheader. The first game they lost, it was very similar. It was like 12 to zero. I think Reagan was the only one with a hit until the last inning. And then the second game though, they won, which was good. Um, it was. Oh, both... they won. Oh, cool. Yes, Sorry, they I was won like the in a trance game. thinking I like, oh my God, how rough uh, was, is that? I, know, I was be... like, I know after the third game, I'm like, this season's going to be really tough. This <laughs> fall season's going to be tough because. You got to win though. That's good. And they won, the, they won the fourth game, which was good. It helped build some confidence with the girls. They played a lot better. A lot the bats were, they were hitting really well. Way better. Um, I took both my kids to the Husker game on Saturday night. That mm -hmm. was cool. Uh, another good win. The Huskers are relevant again, which is nice. Um, go Big Red. And, um, yeah, it was their first night game. Um, so they do, like, this thing after the end of the third quarter. They do all the, they play all the lights, and they turn all the lights off, and everybody pulls their flashlights on their phones out. And, and they do, like, a big light show, and they have flames coming out of these big towers on the field. And they play, like, Thunderstruck. It's pretty pretty neat deal. Kids Amazing. love that. That was the highlight for them. Yeah. But, but we're going to go again on Friday. So that'll be okay, uh, so Friday one night. Thunderstruck is like the number one football song in the history of the world. Yeah. When, when I was a kid playing Pop Warner football, like my dad raised us on classic rock, ACDC, mm -hmm. Leonard Skinner. And Thunderstruck was what we listened to like on our way to every Pop Warner game ever. So when I was a sure. kid, like that was my football song. And my sons now are the exact same way. They love it. Like the second oh, yeah. we're going to a game, like put on Thunderstruck. So like my my kids didn't go to that game, but they would have lost their mind because the Nebraska football like experience is it's second to none when it comes to like fan base and just the cool stuff they do, not just on the field. For a long time, it's just been the stuff not on the field that's been the coolest part. <laughs> so, I know, right? <laughs> When you get the number one quarterback recruit in the country, it changes some things. So, and he is all he has been hyped up to be. He is the yeah, real deal. He's, he's playing great. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's what I got. Love that. Um, I think I mentioned last week that I started coaching our flag football. We had our first game, and well, it was my first game coaching. I was gone the first week, um, and we when you got, got shellacked. Yeah, we got molly whopped, um, just absolutely trounced. Well. I, one, was like, oh, my God, this is going to be the longest season ever if we're, like, this bad. Mm -hmm. Watched a lot of game film this week. Was was focused of, like, I cannot. I was embarrassed. I'm not kidding you. Like, I, none of my team's parents are probably going to listen to the pod. But, like, it was, I was not not embarrassed, like, by them. Like, I was embarrassed, like, that I, I felt like this was my fault. Like, we're getting our butts kicked because I didn't have you guys ready or I'm not calling the right place. Whatever. I did, I did watch your Snapchat immediately afterwards. And I could tell that you were, you I were upset. Dude. It, it shook me to my core. Like for the whole rest of the weekend, like randomly, I would just like be like, damn it. I can't believe we like, and my wife was like, Kyle, it's a flag football game. Get over it. Anyways, so I locked in this week. It was like, I'm, I cannot let that happen. If we're going to lose every week, fine. But we're going to at least score some touchdowns. So we show up. All of my team shows up way before the other team we were playing. At one point, it seemed like we were going to have to give them a couple kids. They had enough to play. But then right when, the, so like we're doing pregame. We're, we look like a legit team. We're running drills. We were running, you know, we're running like plays on air. I've got thunderstruck blasting on my speaker. Cause obviously I bring my speaker to every oh, sports yeah. thing that we do. So like the kids have fun with it anyway. So their team shows up like right when the game starts and they had ended up having more kids than us. And they looked like the kids from the previous week. So I'm like, Oh, okay, here we go. We win the toss. We take the ball 60 yard touchdown on the opening play. Wow gone so i'm like okay let's go we're awesome. in this they get the ball we knock down three straight passes gives us the ball right back 60 yard touchdown on the first play Holy I'm like okay 
we're we're out here. So we ended up trouncing them. It was like 31 nothing. And nice. um I felt like kind of those you ever see the 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 little short clips of like a fan of a team like of like Florida college football, they get their butts kicked and they lose to a team. They're not supposed to. So then a fan of them will post a video of him playing like NCAA oh, 25. Yeah. It's like a hundred yeah. to nothing. And he's just breathing really hard. That's how I was coaching this last game. Yeah. Like, I'm not fucking losing. So anyways, <laughs> we got our first win. I was nice. excited. It was great. Everybody's happy, but um, well, not the other that, team. they're not happy. They weren't happy, so which sorry about it. I, so that I, coach is like how you were last week. Yeah, he's in his car yes. making Snapchats about yes. how mad he was, just how angry he was. So I'm hoping the rest of the league will not be like the Harlem Globetrotters we played the first week. But other than that, um, nothing, nothing really else going on. Just normal school, school week stuff like that, um, and. Uh, I guess that kind of leads us in, unless you have anything else, yep. leads us into um, our most excited segment, um, our six to midnight. This is stuff that gets us up in the morning. Um, things we're excited about, new news, video games. Last week, I feel like we had a ton of stuff. And then this yep. week, it feels like totally opposite, but... Yeah, um, I don't know if it was just a slow week to like announce things or what. I mean, they had you know VMAs and the Emmy Awards were this within the last week, so mm-hmm. like a lot of the news was around that. So mm-hmm. wasn't mm-hmm. a whole lot of new stuff. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, I know we were gone for a number of weeks, so it felt like we had a lot of stuff there, but it also felt like there's a lot of stuff coming out. Yeah. Um. Not for, honestly for for me, just to kind of, I've got a small little chunk um and i know you've got some actual um some weight to your content but uh the penguin comes out this week for those of you i know i always give like a weekly batman update of some sort because i'm a batman nerd don't judge me um i know it's bad i need to talk about something other than that but the new penguin show comes out this is on max or Mm -hmm. hbo max for those of you who don't know that it's now just max um, the show is set in the same setting as, uh, Robert Pattinson's or Pattinson's the Batman world. It's supposed to pick up directly after the movie ended from what they say. Batman is not in it at all, but it's supposed to be from how they're like marketing it and how it, they've been talking about it in interviews. It's like, kind of like the Sopranos yeah. Um, in like Gotham and Batman, which for me, Colin Farrell in a Sopranos type show set in Gotham. <laughs> yeah. Give me that. Yeah. So, I, I actually saw um, it's, it's a 90% right now on Rotten Tomatoes with like 52 reviews, which is great. Yeah. Um, but I actually saw something, somebody had said like, it feels like a sister companion, like, to the Sopranos because it is very much a mob level, like gangster kind of show that's just happens to be in the Batman universe. Yeah. And uh, I think that kind of stuff's cool. Um, you know, where it's, it's maybe more grounded in reality kind of thing, but it takes place in this universe. I kind of like when yeah. they do stuff like that. So yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. To watch be, it. It'll, it'll be fun to see the rise of uh penguin. Cause in the, the Batman movie, he's, He's like a, a um, like a mid level like boss kind of guy, and obviously spoilers. at the end, at the end of the Batman movie, right? Like he kind of takes over, right? Isn't yeah, that, he kind of yeah. steps into this power vacuum uh, since the main head boss gets killed. Spoiler warning. Uh, but yeah, Penguin's coming out. Uh, other quick Batman news: Batman the Cape Crusader, the best Batman TV show, it's come out since Batman animated series it's on um Amazon Prime if you haven't watched it you need to watch it they already had greenlit season 2 and i believe they're already recording and um and making season 2 but uh James Gunn is like so impressed and is so i think the word season is like they're just so proud of what they did with that show that he says in like a week it's going to be announced that they've already got a season three approved too. So 
I'm excited for that. I freaking love that show. I've watched it probably five or six times. Um, and then the other things for me, I've just been playing video games. Warhammer came out. I think I just briefly talked about it the other week. Uh, but Warhammer is, I've never played Warhammer 40,000. I, I know it's a huge tabletop game. That's like, just like nerds, nerds play it. I never played it. I never even played any of the video games, but this no judgment. game just hadn't played. Oh no, no, no judgment at all. I think it's amazing. I at one point I had did like a four hour deep dive on YouTube just to learn up on Warhammer because my neighbor Kevin is a big Warhammer nerd and he got me interested. I didn't know um, that, but now that you say that, I'm like that checks out with Kevin. Dude, he gave me like uh it's like this giant book of just anything and everywhere. It's like a dictionary or like an encyclopedia for Warhammer. So mm. my kids loved it. That's how Grayson got interested in it. Uh, but this video game just dropped that is essentially, it's very similar to Gears of War, like the play style, mm. um, like Gears of War meets Hell Divers. So very, very gory. Um, I had been talking about this game with Grayson and really Parker, my uh, middle child who is in like not he's not even at a daycare he's not even in, he's not a kindergarten yet so he definitely shouldn't know about this game but we've been talking about it for so long that it came out and we had kind of like a movie night but it was a video game night where just me and the two boys were like we got the game we're gonna play and wow it is gory every single bad guy is basically just like a a meat puppet water balloon filled with red water and <laughs> like anything you do it's like it's very gory it's they just have, ketchup parker it's just ketchup he's okay <laughs> yeah it, they have uh they have a sword that is literally a chainsaw like that's their melee weapon so like anyone and everyone's getting cut in half my wife came down because she was excited to see this game that we've all been talking about forever and then immediately screamed at me <laughs> like what is this father of the year they can't be wa watching this what and then um and now all day they just run around like parker my freaking little is my five-year-old who is running around like with a pretend sword that he's saying is a chainsaw and they're they're playing warhammer they're quoting warhammer stuff they sound like little soldiers it's not good um and then they went over to our in-laws to stay for the weekend and downloaded it on that Xbox <laughs> so we could play it together while the, he was there. And she, my wife sent me a text that was like, do, do you hate me or something like that? And was, my my mom just uh, saw Warhammer that Grayson's playing and she is losing her mind. So, yeah, dad of the year. Got in a little bit of trouble there, but uh, we're still playing. So if that says mm -hmm. anything, I think we're in the win column. Yeah, well, that was a lot. I got. I'm, I'm throwing the ball to you. You're good. Um, you take over. A couple things I just wanted to talk about. First off, was uh, I thought this was an interesting article that came out, and this was like how desperate I was to find news to talk about this week. But um, Tim Burton um, apparently um, Warner Brothers wanted Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice to go straight to streaming, and mm. Tim Burton was mm. like, "Absolutely not. I will not have that happen." Um, and they said the only way that they would give him a theatrical release is if he took the budget from one hundred and forty seven million dollars down to less than one hundred. So he had to he had to cut forty eight million dollars off the budget, which he basically worked out deals with the cast to take less money on the front end, but sign back end deals mm. so that they would get percentages of the movie's gross. Well. The movie made $110 million in its first weekend. It made $52 million this weekend. Needless to say, it's going to work out. It's going to work <laughs> yeah. out well for them because nice. the movie is the hit that I think we all kind of expected it to be uh, money-wise. And it turned out to be a decent movie too, which is what I was worried about. But I thought that was an interesting article how he was like, absolutely not going to streaming. Yeah, uh, why? Why? <clears> what's <throat> the thought there? What's the thought about going to streaming? It's I, You got I, Michael... Michael I, Keaton. I, I think the streaming services have their, uh, you know, their budgets like mm. for original content and they have to spend that money on original content. And so gotcha. I'm sure that was like, oh, we can do this. And they were like, absolutely not. <laughs> oh, so well, funny. then we have to find something else. It, it's I, I 
would love to see the uh, ins and outs, but obviously streaming doesn't really have to share its information. So yeah. a lot of that stuff, especially with like Netflix is, is kept pretty close to the vest. So, but I was interesting how Tim Burton was basically like hard to do pass. this. And I think it's going to work out for you guys. Okay. So nice. Thank you, uh, Mr. Tim. Yeah. Nice it, ne next thing also kind of has to do with streaming, but uh, a new movie that just premiered out on Netflix, uh, Rebel Ridge, um, just came out. It's a uh, action thriller that um, it, it, I just kind of came across it the other day. I'd seen the trailer for it, but I was like, you know, I don't know a lot about this movie. Um, I knew it was new. And then I saw the reviews and it was like 93% on Rotten Tomatoes. And I was like, well, that means it's probably okay to watch. Uh, anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's a, like I said, a crime action thriller, uh, directed and written, produced by Jeremy Saulnier and it's, uh, stars Aaron Pierre and he's doesn't have much of an acting resume. They kind of took a chance on him last minute because yeah. this was the movie that John Boyega was like, al they'd already filmed a bunch of it and he just disappeared. Like he left his hotel left a note and said, I'm done. I, I'm not doing the rest of this movie. And yeah. there was a lot of, there was a lot of stories. Like he didn't like the conditions Like he didn't think his hotel was nice enough. He didn't like the, some of the service he was getting as the lead actor. I don't know. He came out and said it was a personal family issue and that had nothing to do with it. And I don't know. Dude, Whatever. What talk about like a strange career turn. Like, Dude yes. came out of nowhere for Star Wars, Force Awakens. Everyone's excited about it. And then the next two movies come out. And it was like the mindset of Star Wars totally changed from the fan base. Mm -hmm. And then he like went on this like trek right. of like against everyone. I, I think he was upset because they didn't end up making him a Jedi like they had basically alluded to. I don't know. Um, and anyway, anyways, but he just seemed like such a strange... He's been like controversial since then. So it's yeah, little, crazy little, that he would just walk out on a movie. Anyway, it's it has a very first blood kind of vibe. Mm. He's he's like a former Marine. The the cops in this town, there's something going on, they're mistreating him, and it just kind of escalates, and then he basically uses his I'm a badass training to solve, figure out what's going on in the town, and then basically take matters into his own hands, kind of thing. I liked very, it. It was, it was very enjoyable. I, I just say it it's was, very Jack Reacher was the vibe. Yeah, that I yeah, kind of so. gives you that vibe too. Crooked small town kind of deal, and this badass is going to come in and kind of take care of it. I thought it would end up being like more he kills everybody, super violent. But it mm -hmm. spoiler alert, it's not. It's more he kind of does the right thing, even though he's going against the cops. Yeah, you kind of watch it, but it's worth it. I thought it was really good. Yeah. But uh, I just wanted to talk about that because that had just come out. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about was the Venom Last Dance final trailer came out. This movie is like five weeks away from premiering. Two things I wanted to talk about. First off, the movie's not rated yet. They don't have mm. a rating. Five weeks away. And I don't know if it's PG-13 or R yet. So I'm, I'm assuming that's a filmmaker studio issue right now. Because mm. we've seen a trailer where Venom bites the heads off of people. Which I would assume would automatically get you an R rating. I don't know. Maybe. So I, I don't know. Maybe they were waiting for Deadpool and Wolverine to come out before they thought about what they wanted to do there. Um, and then the next thing is, it's very clear in the trailer that Null is in the movie. And anybody mm -hmm. who follows Marvel Comics, Null is the symbiote god. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you like I'm an expert on the character, but he's Thanos level capabilities and the fact that they're throwing him in the third part of the venom movies. I was, I was mad when I saw mm -hmm. him in the trailer. Cause I knew who it was right away. And I was like, you better not. Cause <laughs> let's talk about Sony's track record right now with the, the original content they've put out. Morbius is crap. Madam web was crap. The last Venom movie was not very good. The first Venom movie is not great by any mm -hmm. means, but I mean, I'd pretty much watch anything with Venom in it because he's one of my favorite comic book characters. Mm -hmm. I also think Tom Hardy's a rock star, so I'm going to yes. watch it anyway. Um, 
but I, so I did, I did clip this cause I wanted to read this cause I thought this was important, but uh, Donny Cates is a co-creator of Null and, and Donny Cates has been around uh, comic books for a while. Um, and he's done a lot of work for Marvel. He came out after Null was in the trailer. He had no idea he was going to be in the movie. Um, and he created Null and he had no, no. idea he was going to be in the movie. Sure. And he's like, well, I think I need to have a conversation with Sony because if they're going to use my original character, I feel like they should give me something for this. Yeah. So he tweeted this, tweeted on X the other day. Um, I've been talking with Sony and they sent me a script for Venom The Last Dance. I'll say this. It's so much bigger and such so much more ambitious than you can imagine. And um, null. Holy shit. That's how you treat a king. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 That's, that's that changes things. That does right. change things. If the creator's happy with how he's portrayed in the script, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna quiet down a little bit. And it they probably sounds like paid him a big pocket. Maybe full maybe of they did. <laughs> and then I also saw and this I haven't seen this confirmed, but apparently Norman Reedus is null. I, from, I did see that from Walking Dead fame. So, okay, okay. I like I like Norman Reedus. He's a I do he too. Could be a total badass. The Boondock Saints is a is a wild ass movie. If you've never seen it, he's pretty awesome in that. Um, yeah, and obviously he's everybody's favorite character on Walking Dead. Yeah, of course. Of Back course. when I used to watch it. So. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I'm like excited for it. Like part some. Part of the trailer looks cool. There's some funny parts, but like mm. also just the we've talked about this multiple times for me, like Venom, a character like Venom, whose main connection is Spider-Man having nothing to do with Spider-Man and never yeah. will. There's no there's not going to be a Spider-Man. He's not even in New York. I'm like, why is that interesting to us? So anyway, I understand. I, I understand love Tom Hardy and I love Venom. Too. So. And I know I'm with you. Like, why are they doing it? Why did they ever do Venom? We've talked about this before. Why did they ever do Venom if it has nothing to do with Spider-Man? Because it doesn't make any sense. Totally get it. Fair points. But um, I'm I'm a little, I was pissed the other day when that trailer came out. I'm after I heard that from Donny Cates. I'm a little, okay. Okay. I'm going to see it anyway, but okay. All right. I'm ready to. (laughs) That honestly, that does kind of change it here in the creator of talk big about it. It does. Absolutely. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, cool. that's, that's that's all I had time. for this week. Not a lot. So, I mean, might as well get to it and yeah, uh, let's jump in. Jump right into our. You need to see this movie. <laughs> you need to see it. The, the way you said that. I know. I was. Yeah. <laughs> need to see. So the angry. <laughs> Two thousand sports comedy football classic. The Replacements. Um, directed by Howard Deutsch. Written by Vince McEwen. Cast includes Keanu Reeves as Shane Falco. Gene Hackman as Coach Jimmy McGinty. Uh, Brooke Langton as Annabelle Farrell, the head cheerleader slash love interest. Orlando mm-hmm. Jones as Clifford Franklin. Um, Rice fans as Nigel Gruff. I always think I say his name wrong. I don't really know how you say it, but anyway. Uh, John Favreau as Danny Bateman. Um, I included David Denham, Denman as Brian Murphy, the tight end, in his first ever movie. Um, mm. I think everybody knows him mostly as Roy from The Office, but he's mm-hmm. been in, he's in a ton of stuff. He was in Rebel Ridge. He's one of the cops. Oh, yeah, he was. Yep. And then um, Jack Warden as the owner, Edward O'Neill, in his final film role. He was obviously a big actor in like the 50s and 60s, and this was his last movie. And then... Have to include John Madden as Pat Summer and Pat Summerall as themselves. Yeah. I had completely forgotten that they did all the games in this movie, and, and I it made it, it so much so, more oh, legit. <laughs> it was so good to see them again. Like, even though it's yes. a movie, but like Colin, you know, John Madden's writing on the screen, and yeah. I, boom, uh, I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> so it's great. So, um, yeah, so it's it's a movie that it's loosely based on the 1987 NFL strike shortened season. Mm-hmm. Um, that was when the players all went on strike and a lot of the teams hired replacement players. Now, most of them were, um, you know, the 
there was a minor league kind of league that had just dissolved like right before that basically like the yep. usfl yep. had just dissolved right before that so they brought all these people on they brought on some canadian players but that's where they got most of these um scabs if you will yeah they, um, it's it's an interesting like part of like the country's sports history right because they they kept playing the season even though the players were striking by yep. bringing in random newbies and like the Redskins, I think, are who won the Super Bowl that year. And that's who this is based on. So, yeah, so they win multiple games to get the team into the playoffs before the original players come back. And it was very controversial because for many, 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 many years, they did not recognize those players as a part of the team or their right. Super Bowl, like didn't right. give them Super Bowl rings. And I think just a couple of years ago, they – did like they they like presented them with championship rings even though they're like hell old yeah but, and they played like three games in the middle early part of the season like yeah. in october yeah it's very interesting i don't think anything like that will ever happen again because right of the way they set up these collective bargaining agreements now and most of the most of the bargaining is done in the off season mm -hmm. um we did have a a year start late i think it was 10, 12 years ago, but it, oh, it was, it was delayed like a week or two. You know what I mean? It was, yeah. it was, they just delayed the season until they could get it figured out and they got it figured out. And um, I did think it was very interesting how at the beginning of this movie when, cause it just cuts right to the, the strike right at the beginning of the movie, right. Where the owner is meeting with Gene Hackman's character and he's like, Oh, you know, all these, babies that drive Lamborghinis and stuff want more money. How ridiculous is this? And the, the movie very much has that tone that all these players are these spoiled, rotten babies. It felt like the movie was written by an owner. <laughs> yeah. Because it really did. The, the billionaires complaining about the millionaires is hilarious to me. Yeah. And that's why these things, it's like, yeah, they're the ones that actually play. And uh, but it was that's, I that's that a was, good that's a really good point. I thought that was very, kind of interesting. That's so funny. Yeah, they do a they do a, a big they make a big deal about how all these rich players are all they're only in it for themselves. They have no they don't do it for the team and stuff like that. And are yes. there players like that now? Absolutely. We can all probably name a few. But there are also players that, you know are all about the team and work in the off season and things like that. And yeah. it, it's a little different. I just, I feel like this had a really weird vibe to it at the beginning. Yeah, Like but... all of the casting <laughs> that they did for the pros were like perfect villainous. Oh yeah. Like, just, you hate them. So oh, yeah. The, the Martel, the, the yeah, actual the quarterback. quarterback. Oh, he's just such a slime ball. Like they flip Falco's truck over. I mean, they egg him when they drive into the parking lot for the first time. And it's, it's, it's crazy, but yeah. Um, anyway, so that's how the movie starts. Jack Warden's the owner of the team. Um, he calls Gene Hackman's character to come in and be the coach. He used to, it sounds like he used to coach for him, um, previous and he wants him back cause he likes the way he coaches and he knows he's probably his best chance to win with replacement players. So Gene Hackman's like, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that, but I get to bring in my own people. And so there's this cool scene where he's like with his offensive defensive coach and they, like go through this list and they kind of have these little cut scenes where it goes to each player and kind of introduces them, which I, I kind of like that kind of thing in movies because it's a very simple way of introducing story to yeah. the audience. And it feels, you know, it's, it's very simple, but it's also, it works effectively. Um, yeah. Gives so you, you cool little backstory. Yeah. I give you get this cool backstory about Nigel, the kicker and how he's, you know, they call him the leg and, mm -hmm. you know, and he's, you know, he owns his own bar and he's got bookie problems and you get all this, <laughs> like in this one little scene, um, Brian, the tight end, they give this little thing about how he would have been a first round talent if he wasn't born deaf and all that. Um, John Favreau played Danny Bateman, like, he decided he wanted to be a cop and he's like the SWAT team nutcase and like all, all these the different things. People. Yeah. And then they have uh what's the, yeah, we didn't list him during the cast, but uh, Wilkinson who who's in prison, prison and he was like yeah. an all pro. They get him <laughs> on loan from the governor and he has to go by a different name on the field. Nobody knows who he really is other than the team. And uh, <laughs> in, in, interesting fun fact, 
well, you know, we like to throw those out. Um, so Michael Jace is the name of the actor who played Wilkinson, the prisoner. He's in, he's in prison right now for real for life. Cause he killed his wife. Oh my God. What? <laughs> right. That is crazy. <laughs> you know? Oh my uh, gosh. Wow. They really talk about, <laughs> talk about <laughs> casting. <laughs> Good. Well, yeah. And that was actually like within the last like eight years that happened too. That's so, crazy. I mean, it, wasn't, it wasn't like 25 years ago when the movie was made, but um anyway so you get that and then there's um shane falco played by keanu reeves who's this who was this stud college quarterback played for ohio state and they keep referencing like his awful 96 sugar bowl when he lost by like 45 points or something Mm -hmm. um and but anyway it was it was he never got a fair shot in the pros and and they thought he he could come and he could be you know the quarterback for the team and that's who Jimmy McGinty wants because he thinks Shane has the right heart to be yeah. the quarterback of the team. So that's because, how you... because it's Keanu Reeves right. at this point, he wasn't as beloved. I think everybody liked him, but he's a hit like legendary level of everyone loves Keanu right now. Yeah. Um, this was kind of like, this was kind of like right after he started making his big comeback. I want to think, I think this was between matrix one and two. Mm. So, I mean, this was like right when he was, his star was starting to shoot back up. Yeah. Talk about like, what a cool character. Like Shane Falco is the quarterback that I want on my team. He's just cool as hell. He's got a little bit of, he's a little ballsy with what he does, but like, I don't know. I freaking love Falco. I've seen some of those like videos and stuff where it's like, if you could draft a fictional quarterback yeah, who, who would you be? Who, who would you take first? And and usually it's Shane Falco's number one. And then I've had a lot of people that I've seen a lot of lists where they like Johnny Utah's somewhere in there. Yeah, who, yep. <laughs> fun, which is also funny. Also played by Keanu Reeves, right? Johnny Utah from Point Break, who was also yeah. an Ohio State quarterback, which is it's funny. It's changed his name after he what left. If, what FBI. if this is te- what that's technically saying? These are in the same universe. That's what I'm saying. He left the FBI <laughs> and he had to change his name. <laughs> And wow. now, um, go. anyway, so obviously cuts to practice and and, stuff. and it's funny watching it because it's very dated when yeah. you watch it. Some of the practice and the, the lack of technology and like Gene yes. Hackman's wearing a suit and a fedora on the sidelines. He doesn't wear a head. It's so some of that stuff. It's like it's very I like it, but it feels very dated too. Yeah, you know, it feels like, oh, that's not, that's not how football's played it's today. Not, not football. Yeah. Drawing on the chalkboard and stuff. And it's <laughs> yeah. like, okay. Yeah. I, you know, that's just not, that's not how it all works, but uh, obviously. So they, they play for Washington. They're the Sentinels. They have to win three of their last four games in order to qualify for the playoffs. So that's the goal. Scrubs got to The scabs got to win three of the last four. Um, They have to learn how to work as a team. Obviously, they start with the first game. It doesn't go very well. They have major issues. The team can't get along. There's turnovers. There's sloppy play. But there's signs of life. Like, there's things that happen. Shane Shane makes a couple good plays. Brian's a really good tight end. The running back, I forget his name, but he's really good. And the defense, like Wilkinson and then Bateman are, like, monster linebackers that are really good. I actually think Wilkinson might have been a D back. They never really say. Yeah, I thought he was like a safety kind yeah, of Yeah, he might have been. I know. I always felt like when he's on the field, I'm like, it's like Brian Dawkins is back. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. Kind of, that's, maybe that's kind of who they were going for with I this. I think so. May, well, no offense to Brian Dawkins. We know you're not in prison, so you're all right. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, that's the kind of the vibe you get. <laughs> I was right? going to say Sean Taylor, but I guess that's also not good. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, R.I.P. Rest, rest in peace. Um, and then there's obviously there's the cheerleaders. Um, they try out new cheerleaders, which is a very funny moment. Um, it's just, it's funny because the cheerleaders are doing the scabs too. Like they're bringing in these random people to be cheerleaders for four games. Yeah. So she has these tryouts. It's a pretty funny scene. It's all these people that can't dance or are highly inappropriate or make up the dumbest dances ever. (laughs) Um, And then eventually like a couple gals come in, they have dancing experience, but turns out they're strippers. And so the entire cheerleading squad, other than the head cheerleader, Annabelle is basically made up of exotic dancers. 
which <laughs> makes for a pretty funny scene when they're very distracting to some of the um, yeah. other when teams. they when they help the team out <laughs> to win a game. Yeah, by yeah to get, get the the other team to have a penalty or or whatnot by um, what what is the one classic two thousands movie. Yes. Yeah, the other coach I think is like ref. Look, she's slapping that other girl's ass, you know. And he, you <laughs> yeah. know when his team like goes off sides or fumbles the ball or whatever. Um. So yeah, the very the first game's a disaster. It, it, it's very listen. This this movie's very. I want to say almost want to say cookie cutter. Like it's it's like there's a game, there's the aftermath, there's the learning from it. There's a game, there's the aftermath, there's the learning from it. That's how this whole movie plays out. Very very four parts game one game two game three game four yeah so game one ends they lose it's very sloppy they have to figure it out they all go to a bar afterwards causes some problems well here come the real players come in talking shit basically yeah. brian the deaf guy calls martella asshole and, <laughs> and then so then keanu ends up punching him in the face causes this huge bar fight they all get arrested right yeah. which so is Gives us one of the best, most iconic scenes from the movie. When yeah. They're, when they end up all, I can't remember. I just I know I literally just watched it, but does Shane start singing it first, or does no? So they Clifford they start, Franklin start Cliff, singing Clifford it. like, oh yeah, we really showed them, and then they're all like, oh yeah, you really showed them hiding behind the jukebox, Clifford Franklin. And, <laughs> yeah. And that's when he's like, well, at first I was afraid, I was petrified. I was petrified. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and then he oh starts singing and dancing, gets everybody to get up, and they all start singing "I Will Survive." And it's it is it's a pretty good scene. They're all in the jail dancing, and then the coach shows up and says, "If any of y'all do that ever again, you're off my team permanently." But I would love to see Martel's face when you gave him that black eye or whatever. Like, yes. let's go, you know. And this of. and this was like a it was like a it was good for the team chemistry yes. camaraderie. This is what kind of like all right, we're a team. Yeah, you know, we're we did jail this together. together. We beat the yeah. shit out of all these real NFL players together. Now we got to learn how to actually play football as a team. So yes, there there is a scene at the end of the, um, I think it's at the end of the first game. They have a chance to to tie it, and Shane audibles out of the passing down to a run. They almost score, but they don't, and that's how they lose the game. And and Gene Hackman says to him, he's you know like you you got to have heart. You got to want winners want the ball. You know, and he talks about how they need somebody who wants the ball, who has the heart to do it, that kind of thing. That's foreshadowing that's coming later, you know, more of that. But um, so, yeah, so we get to game two a little bit more quicker. The team works together. They win, you know, same kind of thing. I, there's the scene where uh, the, the the sumo wrestler, he's eating the eggs, right? He's just sitting there. Eating, I got I got a, I got a bulk up and he's just eating these hard boiled eggs, right? <laughs> And he's so <laughs> gross. He's so, eating a bowl full of hard he's, boiled he, eggs. He's really just, shoving them in his mouth, yeah, too. So he's gross. Packing them in there. And then he barfs all over the field. And then they all got to move the huddle. Yes. Because nobody wants – and then everybody starts barfing because they can smell it. And, Which is yeah. another, like, iconic scene from this movie where they're yeah. in the huddle and they're all – like shuffling out of the way while John Madden is like <laughs> commentating it. This yeah. is like the first thing that they've done on the field as, as a team. <laughs> like yeah, together. exactly. So, yeah. You ever seen anything like that before? I don't know how many times they say that in the movie. Like you ever seen anything like that before? Uh, no, no. Oh, John Madden. It is. It's great. Um, let's see. So then we get to the third game and again, they, as a team, they're they're doing now this is a team now that has had some of the players have crossed over mm -hmm. right so they talk about how it's 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 tougher because some of the players have come back um they also i think talk about how some of the they had bought semi-pro football teams and the, the competition gets tougher but they find a way to win the third game um again this this plot is very simple mm -hmm. there's not a lot to it um Shane Falco has his budding romance with the head cheerleader. Yeah, like, there's a love story going on. I of course. Have that in. You know what's really good? I thought too is like the music in this movie is actually pretty good. They do a good job Dude, with the soundtrack. Yes. Um, which is I thought was interesting. But uh I think they put like There Goes My Hero and like it's it's very yeah, it's it, it's a very early two thousand soundtrack, but they did a they did a very good job with it. Yes. The last song that they play is like, and I, I can be king. Yeah. That's, like, that's the song. We could be heroes. It's, 
Yeah. It's so I didn't know that's the name of it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so perfect for this movie. Like if I ever hear that song, it immediately takes me to this movie. Yes. It's just like fucking perfect ending. Yeah. And like when I hear what I will survive, I think about him dance line, like line yes. dancing in the jail. <laughs> in the jail. Um, yeah. Very good. You know, something else that watching this movie too, man, I miss Gene Hackman. He Dude. was such a good actor. Like yeah. I'm watching him in this movie and I'm like, I was thinking about Hoosiers and how great that movie was and Unforgiven. And I'm like, I need to watch that because he was such a badass in that movie. Dude, um, but yeah, Gene's Gene Hack- great. Well, I freaking love uh, Clifford Franklin. He has one Orlando of Orlando the- Jones. Yeah, he has one of the <clears throat> funniest. <laughs> it's the funniest freaking scene where he's like, Clifford Franklin. Clifford Franklin's like a one man cold. Football that's a, that's after like he one catches, man cold. <laughs> I think that was the third game where he catches the winning touchdown and then he, he, he they go for the win and he catches the two point conversion. Yes. But like they put, stick they, them on his hands. Yes. So that. <laughs> They cover his hands in stickum, which yep. is like gooey sludge <laughs> that sticks. So it's easier to catch. They're super illegal, but they're in the <laughs> they're in the huddle. It's like it's like Clifford, I'm throwing up to you. He's like he's got all so he's, I look like I just jacked off an elephant. Yes. <laughs> so, anyway, so he catches it, which is the funniest part about the whole thing. As a football player, the catch that he has with it. It doesn't look like someone who's caught would stick him. Like no. he almost drops it, slides right through his hands. Yeah. But he still catches it. But his line in the <laughs> his line in the locker room is football, Clifford Frank's like one man cold. Uh, Cliff Frank the only one catching it. Clifford Franklin's the only one coming down with it. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, I, I don't know why. It's yep. just like the fucking best football line ever. That it like me and my teammates would say that all the time. And when I was in college, just joking around, like, it was a one man cold. I'm the only one catching it. I'm the only one coming down with it. Classic. It is a pretty good line. Um, so we get to the we saw the third game they win. So now they just have to win the fourth game to make the playoffs. But some of the players are starting to cross over, right? The strike's going to yeah, end yeah. as soon as that fourth game is over. Martell crosses over. He's ready to come back and be the all pro quarterback. For the Ooh. Right. And so Gene Hagman tells the owner, like, I'm sticking with Shane Falco. And he's like, absolutely, you're not. You're going to use my quarterback who's yeah, getting paid. Multi-million dollar QB eight, is going to play. Yeah, $8 million quarterback. Crazy that, <laughs> that now they're getting paid $60 million, But Yeah, it's like, yeah. that's a that's not even a ba- – that's a backup's backup. It's, you know, <laughs> not even, this kickers point. are getting paid more now at this point. But <laughs> Dude, anyway, the but- other, the, there's a there was another funny part with Clifford Franklin in the locker room, which is one of it's such a low key blink and you'd miss it. Mm. But he's like standing in, he's standing like with his leg up on his stool. Yeah, it's and, the same scene where he says the, the cold part. Yeah, um, it's freaking um, John Favreau's character walks by and just like stiff arm pushes him yes. into his locker. He falls over. <laughs> I, there's something about that like subtle comedy that just kills me every time I see it. Yeah. If you if you if you're watching this movie again sometime, make sure you pay attention to that part. We pay attention to all of it. The movie's great. Um, so we get to the we get to the third the fourth game. Martell's back. Shane Falco's going back to scrubbing barnacles off the bottoms of people's boats because that's his job. Um, yep. He lives on a houseboat and he scrubs shit off of some yeah. other rich man's boat. His job is literally <laughs> scrubbing shit off of someone's boat. I like the part where the cheerleader takes him home, which is it's so random, too, because she drives like a maniac and they never talk about it ever again. But like she just drives like a maniac, jumping on the sidewalk and stuff. But she takes him home. And uh, she goes, oh, my gosh, which one's yours? And he goes, oh, you see that big one over there with the satellite dish? And she goes, yeah. And he's like, it's the one next to it covered in uh, seagull shit. <laughs> yeah. And I just, it's just jokes like that. And she, listen, like Keanu Reeves, Keanu Reeves has this very like his delivery is very similar in almost every movie. But sometimes when he when he does comedy like that, I think it's hilarious because it's so dry yeah. um, and it's it's just the way he is. But. And that's it's this is a comedy, it's a funny movie, yes, but it does like it doesn't feel like the characters are trying to be like funny, goofy, like they're serious, but the yeah. way they do the movie, it's like 
I don't know. It's funny as hell, but also feels very serious, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Well, yeah, because there's there's this thing with Bateman and Wilkinson. They're both on the defense, but one's a cop and one's a convict, right? And so they there's the scene where they're in the lunchroom and they're sitting there and and Clifford Franklin sits down and he's like, hey, you're 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 so Wilkinson. And he's like, oh, you got in trouble with the cop. And he's like, well, you know, F them police. And I hate <laughs> cops. And all that. And then he just Bateman just looks at him because I'm a cop. And it's just it's funny. It's yeah. just funny. Uh, or the scene where Martell and the other players flip Shane's truck the second time and the two guards, the brothers that are like bodyguards come out mm-hmm. and uh, they're like, you need to flip that back over. And he's like, what are you going to do about it? And they just, he just pulls out his gun. And he like <laughs> he pulls scoots gun out, out the windows out of Martell's <laughs> Porsche and, and you're going to pay for that. He's like, no, I'm not. And then they just, that, I mean, it's just, okay. Yeah, Hilarious. they're, they're protecting funny. their quarterback. Yeah, we're the guards. <laughs> Protect our quarterback. Uh, anyway, it's it's funny. I, I the, the jokes are great. So they get to the fourth game. Exactly what you think is going to happen is going to happen. Basically, the team they're playing is all NFL players now. They've all come back. So they've got like two players have come back on the Sentinels, Martell being one of them. Exactly what you think is going to happen happens. None of the – he can't get along with anybody. He doesn't like the way McGinty calls the place. He calls his own plays. There's animosity there. They're getting whooped like 17 to nothing at halftime. And of course the sideline reporter is like, what, what do you need to do to come back and win coach? And he's like, we need somebody with heart. And of course, Oh, here there's Shane Falco on his houseboat <laughs> watching the game. Shows up mid game. <laughs> Shows up 10 seconds later after that <laughs> interview, you know, right when they get into the locker room and of course the coach is like, what took you so long? Traffic, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then so they classic Falco. Yeah. And then Gene Hagman basically shoves Martell out of the locker room, telling him he'll never coach for him and yada, yada, yada. Anyway, they come back, they win the game. Right. And it's, Oh yeah, it, they do. but you've got the, you've got the epic speech at the end of the game from Shane Falco in the huddle, pain heals, chicks dig scars yeah. and glory lasts forever. Like what a man, what a, what a quote. Put it on my tombstone. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So they Chicks get down, dig scars. Yeah. They get down to the end. They tie the game to send it into overtime. Nigel's already kicked like a 65-yard field goal of the game prior. They know he's got the leg. They, they go to line up, <clears throat> and he can tell something's wrong. Shane can tell something's wrong. And he realized, and, sh- and he's telling, Nigel's telling Shane, I, I can't help it. They're going to take my bar away. I don't know what I got to do. Basically, he's supposed to miss the kick for the bookies. And so Shane picks up the ball and he runs it in to to secure the win, right? Like, because they were going to tie it and they go and win the game. And that's, yep. you know, and then cool. it's it. That's it. That, you know, like, dude, the, Nigel, the kicker, by the way, mm-hmm. I I played with, I swear to God, the real life version of this kicker. I Is played. It- Juco was he, football. Was he wiry? He was wiry. He was British mm. or English. Um, Nigel's they, Welsh. He actually, went, well, he was from that part of the world. They have the same freaking accent, okay? Whoa. I've You're just asked, lost half. To go our listeners again. You're offending everybody. <laughs> hey, uh, there's soccer players that I've hung out with in college that are from Wales and England, and they all were just the same buddies to us they're pretty much the same they're not but anyways when i was uh at the community college before i transferred out to nebraska or out here um we had this english kicker he was a soccer player never ever came to practice on our our college football team never came to practice smoked cigarettes at halftime and would boot 50 yarders like it was nothing it was like the craziest thing ever so I, that it sounds funny from this movie, but I've seen it in real life. It's there are kickers like that. So did you call him the leg? Uh, no, I don't think really anybody called him anything because he didn't really talk with it. He wasn't no. as funny as Nigel. Well, so. then, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but, um. Anyways, anyway, they win the game. Obviously, they're scabs. They they got to go back. They talk about they got to go back to their real lives after this. You know that there's no tomorrow. So play like it's today and today's it because tomorrow the strike's over and we're all back to being nothing. Yep. You know, we'd all like to think that some of these guys get a shake in the NFL, you know, and Shane Falco got to play quarterback somewhere. Um, 
A couple other just interesting trivia facts I found about the movie. Um, it was filmed in Baltimore at the Ravens Stadium. was where they filmed oh. the stadium scene. They actually had military personnel come in and fill out the fans in the stands. Like when oh, they were fascinating. Filming, which I thought was kind of cool. And then apparently they invited Keanu Reeves to camp the the following season. The Ravens did just because oh, it was of, like a joke. Yeah, because of the movie, nice. like to, you know, try out and stuff. But that was kind of interesting. Um, uh, like we said, it's loosely based on the 1987 NFL strike, especially the Redskins. The Falco Falco Martell controversy is loosely based on the quarterback controversy that year between Doug Williams and Jay Schroeder, um, which is interesting. Doug Williams obviously replaced Jay Schroeder and, and started through the playoffs and then was um, the, the first black quarterback to ever win a Super Bowl. He was Super Bowl MVP that year, so um, which was kind of neat. And then Gene Hackman actually narrated the documentary America's Game about the 1987 Washington Redskins because of this. So I thought that was kind of a oh, cool, that's a cool, cool little, little fact too. Yeah. Nice, that's great. Yeah. I I still see people in Shane Falco jerseys at like professional sports games. All as the you should. <laughs> like people still rep that Falco jersey. That's in like the pantheon of like all time cool jerseys that someone can own. I mean, like I you think about the fictional character jerseys you see. You see Griswold hockey jerseys, right? Mm-hmm. You see Bobby Boucher football jerseys, and you see Shane yeah. Falco football jerseys. Like that's yeah. those are the three most common ones, I think. Those yeah. are the ones you see. But it listen. Well, this movie's a lot of fun. It, it's it, to me. This was like when I was like I think it was a high. I was right out of high school, so this was like a college it was perfect movie around for when I got to that age. I loved it. I was, you know, I played football at that time mm-hmm. and like to me, it's an eight. Like I love this movie. I think oh it's, yeah, for I, sure. It's great. For sure. Um, I'm honestly, I'm going to give it a nine because wow. it's, this is, it, it couldn't be any better if that makes sense. But like, I, I don't know. It's a movie that if, if I, you can go and rewatch a movie like this anytime that it's on, it's one of those movies that I'm like, Oh, I'm going to watch this. You've seen it before. You know, what's going to happen, but it's still hilarious. Every time mm-hmm. I'm giving it a nine. I think it's a nine. Hell yeah. I love it. I love it. And the replacements. <laughs> if you've never seen the replacements, it's football classic. season. It's a clap. You need to watch it. It's great. And you don't have to be a football fan. No, or a sports it's a funny fan. movie to watch it and like it so i mean like good. we we talked about football movies last year when we did the program and i know i know i put the, this was in our top, i think we both had this in our top five the replacements yeah. for sure yeah. but i mean in the pantheon of football movies it's one of the better comedy ones for sure absolutely i agree with that anyway nice. that takes us into my favorite segment there can be only five only five So, a little bit on brand this week, like we like to do. So, we're going to do top five sports comedies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Right? mm -hmm. I was going to just say top five sports movies because there's some movies I I love to talk about. But we, Kyle, said comedies. I didn't think that was the right choice. I think that's a good call. This was hard to put this list together. It was. There's a lot of good ones. There was a lot of good ones. Boy, I and it was like when I was making this list too, I was... I was, I honest, I'm just going to say it right now. There are no football movies on my list. There's zero. Love that. Love that. Zero, which I was shocked. Fascinating. I, my entire list is basically two sports, which is crazy. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> so. Mine is very all over the place. Good for you. All right. Do you want me to go first? Yeah. All right. Top five sports comedies. I didn't do honorable mentions. I went straight five for five. That's number that's five. Pretty impressive. I know the original Bad News Bears. Number five, '70s classic baseball movie. Walter Matthau as the as the coach. Listen, you say Bad News Bears, and everybody knows exactly what you're talking about. Even if they've never seen the movie, you're talking about a team of kids that either has shitty attitudes or are all dysfunctional as hell. And mm-hmm. like I think you mm-hmm. even referenced Bad News Bears like a week ago. Yeah, that's the it's, team that we've got. It, if so. you've never seen it, it's a classic. Like I, I've watched. I think there. I don't know how many Bad News Bears movies there are, 
the original Bad News Bears and then what was the the breaking training? I remember watching that one like as mm-hmm. a kid. Like I love those movies because foul mouth kids is hilarious to me, mm-hmm. especially when I was a kid, like a little kid telling some dude to like shut up and stuff. I love that. I love that. <laughs> anyway, it's a great it's a great movie if you've never seen Bad News Bears. And Walter Matthau is iconic in that movie. You think it's better than the the remake with Billy Bob? Yes, hundred percent. Hundred percent. I I never liked the re, the Billy Bob one because mm-hmm. at that point it felt very bad Santa, and I can't stand bad Santa, so it kind of ruined that movie for me. You can't Billy stand Bob's bad. One. I can't stand it either. I hate that movie. It's the we worst. talked about that. Yeah, we. I don't. About, I don't. I think I, we yeah, talked about how much we hate bad. Santa. How much we don't. I don't Terrible understand. Terrible movie. Anyway, yeah. Anyways, continue. Because then we do like top five Christmas movies we didn't like or something like that. And yeah, we, yeah. We both had that on there because it's yes. I don't get it. Anyway, I'm with you on that. And number four, I had Bull Durham. I had this higher oh. on my list until I like started getting into it. And I was like, oh, I got to move this down just because of how much I watch these other movies. Bull Durham is a classic Kevin Costner, minor league baseball, Tim Robbins, Susan Sarandon. It's, it's, it's great. It is a mm-hmm. great movie. It's hilarious. It's very heartfelt. And it's got some drama parts in it, too. It's funny story. I went to um, the North Carolina last year uh, for Anthony's Anthony's fight when we went to when he was fought in Charlotte, and I made a point when we walked we walked by the Durham Bulls home stadium. I took a picture of it because I was I was like, this is the coolest thing ever because because <laughs> of the movie. Um, Bull Durham eighties classic baseball movie. If you've never seen it, highly highly recommend. This was I- like prime Kevin Costner. I saw um, this as number one at a lot of lists. That I, did too. Had online. I did too. Yeah. So, and I did like too. Okay. I said, I think I started it at like two. I already, I knew what number one was going to be immediately. Um, oh, nice. I started this one at number two and then I was like, Oh, and I got to move that down. I got to move that down. Um, and that's why it ended up on number four. I will say this, like Kevin Costner obviously is a baseball nut, right? Yes. Bull Durham. Yeah. Field of Dreams, for love of the game. I remember when I was a kid and I used to go to the College World Series games out at Rosenblatt. He he was always there rooting on Cal State Fullerton. Like you knew where he sat too. Like when you would go to those yep. games, he always sat on the third baseline. You knew right where Kevin Costner was every year. So, love that. Um, but I I didn't put Field of Dreams on this list because I I didn't count it as a sports movie. Did you say Field of Dreams is a comedy? No, I guess not. I don't know. It's more of a drama. You're right. Yeah, it's like a serious movie. Yeah, in you're my right. opinion. Is that a sports movie? I yeah, it's a baseball movie. That's how I see it. They mm-hmm. literally play a game in the field. Well, not every year, but they've played a real MLB game in the Field of Dreams. Yeah, they've done that. I think they've done that so, twice now. It's cool. It's yeah. in Dyersville. I think it's in Dyersville. Yeah, it's in um, Iowa. Anyway, number three, Happy Gilmore. Nice. It's it's my favorite Adam Sandler movie. I am so excited they're making a sequel to it. Even yeah. though I'm worried it will not hold a candle to the original, yeah, I th- it's so quotable. Like that, the I I mean, listen, the iconic character, Happy Gilmore, Chubbs, Shooter McGavin, Shooter I eat, McGavin. I eat pieces <laughs> of shit like you for breakfast. <laughs> Ew, you eat pieces of shit for breakfast? No, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, what a movie! Play it as it lies. I had to hit my shot off of Frankenstein's fat foot over there. <laughs> I mean. Dude. Like, Find in your happy place. Find in your happy place. You will, I will, you will go to sleep, or I will put you to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Film um, glasses. Shut the hell up. So mm. many just iconic things yeah. that came mm. out of that movie. Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie so much. Uh, there was a vacation trip one time, and this was back like when we didn't have streaming, and you had to like pack a DVD player and play on the 19 inch TV that was at the vacation cabin, and. Mm-hmm. We watched Happy Gilmore like a dozen times one vacation because it had just come out. <laughs> anyway. The Happy- price is wrong, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, number two, I had a league of their own. and this- Oh, my God. I love nice. it. Nice. It's such a good movie. It uh, is a great movie. It, I think it's, I put it as a comedy. It, Tom Hanks is definitely the most comedic person in that movie. <laughs> Yeah, his character is so, fantastic. Yeah, he's, you know, there's, there's no, no crying. Are you crying? crying. There's no, there's crying, no crying, crying in baseball. That movie's great. And I remember like when it came out when I was younger, like I thought it was iconic. I it was great. It was so fun to watch. The 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 40s backstory. 
all of the things about war. The, the, the cast was amazing. Gina Davis, Lori Petty, Rosie O'Donnell, Madonna, obviously Tom Hanks, like mm-hmm. John Lovitz's character is hilarious, hilarious at the beginning as the scout. Like yes. it's a, it's a great movie. It's like an all time classic. And Maybe it's like, about a cool little moment in sports history yes. in our country. Absolutely. Like, and that's one of the coolest things about it is how it ties into the war. And there's some very dramatic scenes where, you know, the one gal's uh, when they deliver the letter and, and the, he's like, oh, I, I can't remember, I can't remember whose name it is. And Tom Hanks, give me the letter, get the hell out of here. And he opens it up, yeah. and he, you know, he hands it to Betty and he's sorry, Betty. And, and like the, all the girls come to her and it's, yeah, it's Man, sad. what a what a movie! I love yeah. it. That's and great. they bring. I'm pretty sure when they are in the like baseball hall of fame at the end, <laughs> they actually had character or real people from it. If I remember right, like I think some of the some something. of the people, yeah, some of the people like in the team shots and stuff were yeah. were real people. Yeah, so it, it's it's such a good movie. Like, and I know they did like a series. I never watched the show. I think they did it on Prime a couple years ago. Or they did a league of their own oh, TV yeah. series. I never oh, yeah. wa- I never watched I it because the movies. I, you know, I touch think it. it's a great movie. It's that's like great. an all time sports movie. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I would. In for me, I don't think I would say that it's a comedy. Sure. Even though it is funny and there are funny moments in it, yeah. I think of that as like a serious movie. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Tom Hanks' character is hilarious, though. Definitely, we'll say that. Yeah. So that's your I, number like, two. Okay. Where well. he signs the baseball and gives it to the kid. Avoid the clap, Jimmy Dugan. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Advice, kid. It's, oh, yeah. He's, he's so good in that movie. And then he number one, funny. Caddyshack. I knew it was going to be Caddyshack. Like, it is it is one of the funniest movies of all time, period. And the fact that it's a golf movie makes it even better. And I loved it as a kid. And then as I got older and understood some of the jokes and references, even funnier. But Rodney Dangerfield, Chevy Chase, Bill Murray, like... Man. What a movie! It's the Gopher, all of it. The the, I, the it's so it's so iconic. I can't what I can't remember what list we did not too long ago, but I thought that Caddyshack was going to be like one of your top ones when we were doing it, mm-hmm. and I was shocked that you didn't have it because in my head I was like, I know I thought he loved this movie, so you have it as your number one. Mm-hmm. There it is. Love that. It was the first movie Harold Ramis ever directed too, which I think is yeah. crazy. Well, Ghostbusters. That, that, that they just hit a home run with it, you know? Our list is so different. I figured. And and when I was making mine, multiple times I had to question myself, like, ah, am I really going to put that as like a top five comedy of all time? And I went back and was like, yeah, because for me, like, this was my, these are the movies that I grew up on. So, yeah, I, I was going to say, so, so, like, our list is going to be different because, like, I have a movie from the 70s. I have a movie from, I have two movies from the 70s. I have a movie from the 80s. I have two movies from the 90s. Like, for sure. These are all movies before your time. Yes. And, and it's like, you can tell just by looking at these lists, which it's not often that we have our lists that end up like that. I'll, I mean, I feel like every now and then we will, but for the most part, we're like on the same page with stuff, but this is just when you grew up and what was funny to you. I had, uh, I like your list, by the way, you had some, you had movies on there that were on a lot of the lists I saw online, like top 50. Those were like in the top 10 of a lot of people's just because they're classics. Like Caddyshack is a classic. I was looking at one of the lists and I was like, where's Caddyshack on this list? And it was like number 16 sports comedies. It was like number 16. I was like, no. Yeah. There was no no planet. Is that number 16? Yes. I can't remember what the list I was looking at that had it. It had like 50 of the top co- sports comedies, yeah. but like the top 10, like I didn't even know some of the movies. Like I'd never even heard of them before. So it's just like all over the place. Crazy. But anyways, okay, here we go. Got my top five. I do have two honorable mentions. I won't get into too much of them, but I did want to talk about them or just mention them. First honorable mention, little giants, football, pop Warner movie, freaking hilarious. Classic. I love that. Classic. Movie classic movie um it was painful not to have it in my top five sure um other top 
or other honorable mention, Rookie of the Year, which I think I talked about a couple episodes ago, but essentially it's about a kid who falls and breaks his shoulder and that ends up turning his shoulder into like a rocket arm and he becomes like the greatest pitcher in MLB Henry as a Rowan kid. Gardner. Henry Rowan Gardner. Yeah. Hen, hen, re, re, ro, ro, hen, re. Yes. Um, if you haven't seen that in a while, I just watched it with my kids a couple weeks back or maybe a couple months ago, and they thought it was so funny, and it felt good in my heart to know that my kids actually loved the movies that I loved as a kid. So yeah. it's great. Uh, rookie of the Year. Okay, number five. Originally had this in my honorable mention. I had to put it in my top five list. Some might not say it's a sports movie, but it is a sports movie when you go by like training, montage, competition. At number five, top five sports comedies of all time for me, Beer Fest. It's not about, it's not a real sport other than a competition of drinking. And there is just something about Beer Fest that I just cannot stop laughing at if that movie from start to finish is so funny. I just watched that movie like a week and a half ago when I was in Canada fishing. Oh, nice. We we watched it. It's so good, right? Isn't it fucking hilarious? So I got to tell you this real quick. So we, I took beer fest because last year my stepdad was like, you need to bring funnier movies or something, you know? And I'm like, okay, I got to switch out a bunch of these movies and bring more comedies. Cause anyway. Um, so we watched beer fest and then, then like the next night we watched super troopers he had never seen Super Troopers. Oh my god. But he gosh. loved Beer Fest. And I was like, it's the same guys. <laughs> it's all You've the never same seen people. This? The oh same god. comedy. Yeah. That's that had to have been a treat for him then, getting to experience yeah. you know, schnozberries he, he taste even, like schnozberries. He didn't even and... say that till like the end of the movie. He's like, ha, this is pretty good. I've never seen this. And I'm like, <laughs> you know that's the same guys from Beer Fest, right? And he's like, is it? Dude. I'm like, they... oh my god. Super Troopers is great. Beer Fest obviously has a little bit different of a feel. I think Super so Troopers great. is looked at more fondly by the yeah. general public. Sure. But Beer Fest is like low key, <clears throat> way funnier. It's great. In my opinion. It's so, great movie. Um, yeah. Beer Fest. If you haven't seen it in a while, go watch it. Number four, I had The Water Boy. Oh, Bobby Boucher. There is something. I Obviously, I played college football. Football has been a part of my life since I was a wee lad and this movie was like seminal in our house all the time like when I was a kid my brothers would hold up like a like a long pillow and I would <laughs> tackle this pillow like Bobby Boucher it's so funny the the amount of one-liners that came out of the water boy that still uh like people will say to this day if you're at football practice, people will say, you know, water sucks. It really, really sucks. Like, people still say that. My favorite. Gatorade's better. Yeah. <laughs> Gatorade. H2O. There are so many random little one-liners in that movie that, like, my friends and I will still say to this day. I'm like, Captain Insano shows no mercy. Like, they're... It's, it's a glacier. It's, it's, it's water. A, it's a, power, it's a power bomb compliments a Captain Insane. <laughs> yeah. It's it's, it's a, a water. It's water from Alaska. It's glacier water. Oh, it's like, cold. Yeah. Oh my gosh. There's also a low key funny moment in it, kind of like um from the replacements where you won't really like not a lot of people will pick up on it, but <laughs> They're, one of his college professors is like Colonel Sanders, basically yep. the KFC guy. And somebody throws a rock just randomly on campus. You have no idea where it's going, but it flies and breaks through the window in the classroom and hits Colonel Sanders in the head. And he gives this like, like sound when he gets hit with this rock. And it, <laughs> Like my good friends and I, we still will randomly say that like out of nowhere because we just thought it was so funny when we were kids. But anyways, Waterboy, really cool football movie. Yeah. Go watch it. Mud Dogs won the Bourbon Bowl. Um, remember when Bobby Boucher came back and the Mud Dogs won the Bourbon Bowl? Uh, number four. Number three, 
which I actually switched these around so I need to make sure I got it right. Number three, I had dodgeball. Hmm. Um, I love dodgeball. Yeah. It is not a traditional sports movie, no. but it is hilarious. Again, another movie that has just like insane amount of one-liners. The cast is star-studded. Ben Stiller is just hilarious. Um, Justin Long is funny in it. Obviously, Vince Vaughn is yeah. hilarious as well. There's just uh, Alan so Tudyk. <laughs> yeah, Alan. Steve the Pirate. Like, there's just so there everything about that movie. Like the yeah. amount of one liners that come out of it. The the it's an all time. I think everyone knows Dodgeball. Yeah, and remembers it, but maybe not a, the greatest in terms of like. Oscar winning movies, and I'm pretty sure all of these movies are very, very, very low rated on Rotten Tomatoes, but for me, they're classics. So, sure. uh, number three, Dodgeball. Number two, I had Talladega Nights. Mm. It's the Ballad of Ricky Bobby. Again, not a traditional sports movie, but God, it's so funny. It's so, it's so bad humor. I'm not a huge Talladega Nights fan. Oh, really? Like, I don't God. dislike the movie, but I never go out of my way to watch it. Yeah, I think for me, Will Ferrell, like, I think he is hilarious. I think he has some movies where it's like they're trying something and it's just not funny. This is not one of those movies. To me, like, everything about what it was it just hilarious. I'm glad you like that movie. But to me, like, I never was a huge Will Ferrell fan until Step Brothers came out. And I think yeah. that's one of the greatest, funniest damn movies I've ever seen. It is great. Yeah. I See, for me, when like, when Anchorman came out, that was a movie that I like didn't get. When, yeah, like, same. This is supposed I didn't to be first funny. either, yeah. So, and then, but but then you I go do. back. Yeah, you yes. go back and it really grows on you. But Talladega Nights is him and John C. Riley are yes. freaking hilarious. Yes. So. Um, I had that as my number two. I had shifted my top five multiple times, but this is what I ended up with right before we started. And then I had my number one sports movie of all time is Happy Gilmore. Mm. You, you can't go wrong with Happy Gilmore. It no. is. Everybody loves Happy Gilmore. Mm -hmm. Everybody will watch it from start to finish or at any point when it's on TV. Like you said earlier, it's a star studded cast, but there's so many hilarious memorable moments from that movie like it's it is an all-time classic uh happy gilmore my number one sports comedy of all time and i feel like there was so many that we left out so much so that i had to bring some other movies and add them to our next segment so we can still talk about because there's so many so all right I like your list our top oh, five. i like i do like your list there's no bad movies on it Talladega Nights is a funny movie. I, I just, I was never one of my favorites. Waterboy could have been on my list easily. I mean, it was like, listen, Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, Waterboy were like one, two, like three. Yes. D dude hit three home runs in a row. I, For I sure. Did, I, I, Wedding Singer was in there too around that time. And it was like, Adam Sandler could do no wrong. Yes. He was just hitting home like runs left and right. Three or four year span was. I and, almost and then put. He did Big Daddy was in there like right dude. after that. I love Big Daddy. He, he, it's, it's great. The movie is so fucking good. And I know, like, there's a lot of people that don't like Little Nicky because it's weird. And I get yes. that. But yep. before that, uh, he hit some dangers. Yeah, he couldn't He couldn't be stopped. I originally had Waterboy and Happy Gilmore, like, as a slash. Like, number four, <laughs> Waterboy and Happy Gilmore. But I'm like, Happy Gilmore's just too good. Like, it's, it's too good. so funny. It's great. Needs its own its own little thing there. So, mm -hmm. all right, sweet. What do we got next? Rotten. Is your tomato? Question Kyle? mark? Question mark? <laughs> That's right. Uh, it is. Uh, this. So, how rotten is your tomato? This is a segment where we uh, basically share with the other two different movies and have them guess what was higher, which one was lower with the rotten tomato score, um, and then guess what the score is. So, We've been doing this segment for a number of episodes now, yeah. and I I really enjoy it. So yeah, um, there's a there's a ton of times where I get totally stumped. There's a ton of times where 
Howie has guessed the exact Rotten Tomato score. Um, You've but, done it too. We both have. But I feel like Howie does a really good job of picking the movies that it knows it's going to really bug me whenever we gotta have find out the score. one set that's going to just like, you've got to be shit. You know, like, I that's love that. that movie. How dare you? So, Like when Flash was hiring Man of Steel last week, I was like, Kyle's going to blow an aneurysm. Yes, that is... I'm I'm not even gonna get into it. I'm not even gonna get into it. Just I just got mad all of a sudden all over again. So Man. okay. I have got a lot of fun ones, and honestly, not on purpose, but I mean it is on purpose. I stuck with kind of the sports comedy movies. Cool. I dig it. Um I it was really like three years that all of these movies came out. It's kind of all wild. Right. I was just picking random movies. And then when I realized the year of it, I'm like, Jesus, sports comedies in 1998 and 2005, 2006, 96, 94, 98, 2005, 2006. Those are like those little worlds. was all sports comedies. So to start, we're going to go with 2005's. Adam Sandler's The Longest Yard football <laughs> movie. He doesn't sound like you like it. Or 1998's Adam Sandler's The Waterboy. Waterboy's higher. At a 76. Longest Yard's a 65. Um, Waterboy is higher at a 33%. Get, the fu- get out. <laughs> Waterboy's at 33%. The Longest Yard was at a 31%, so Barf. not very far behind. Yeah. Um, okay, you, you okay. One for one, you're crushing it. Okay. Waterboy's 33? 33%. Yes. Critics are dumb. Shocked. It's Critics so, are dumb. It's one of those movies where the audience score and the critic score is mm-hmm. like totally night and day. You, you have I think to, is pretty, critics have to watch some of these movies and understand what they're trying to do. You have to understand yes. what kind of movie this is. Yeah. I agree. That's why a big reason why I think Rotten Tomatoes is can suck a fatty. It's not Rotten Tomatoes. Um, it's just it's the critics. It's all I like, know. That's a good point. Dumb. It has nothing to do with them. They're, they're an aggregate. They're an aggregate. All right. Um, okay. Next two movies. 1998's Basketball. Did you see that movie? I love that movie. I fucking love that movie too. 1998's Basketball. The guys from South Park where they create their own sport of basketball and baseball in one that goes national or worldwide. Uh, versus 2006's Bench Warmers. Oh, man. Oof. <laughs> Another great movie, right? Who, I, I'm going to. Oh, who doesn't love Bench Warmers? I bet, I bet Bench Warmers is higher. But these scores are going to be low. I bet bench warmers is like a like an eighteen, and I bet basketball <laughs> is like a twelve. Okay, so bench warmers is lower. Ah, okay. At a thirteen oh, percent, bench close. warmers okay. is at thirteen percent. You had eighteen. Basketball is a forty-one percent. Okay. okay. Like way higher. I than I, I should have said I should have said been I should have said baseball because I like that movie better. Yeah, basketball is I like that more than the That's other a, two. So I knew, but bench there's movie. you got there's got to be something to say about Gus Bus from the Bench Warmers. Just old Rob Schneider being a superior athlete it's such in a, a movie. Stupid, <laughs> such a stupid freaking movie. But it's great. It's so dope. Uh, I still, uh, when we were talking about you, you quoted or referenced this movie last week. We were yeah, talking the, about the I am flag 13. team. I am, I am 13. 13. So, so oh. here's the thing with basketball, though, and I'm, this is why I went with the low score was because when that movie came out, like everybody hate, like every adult hated South Park, right? Remember mm-hmm. that was like everything was controversial, and they made this movie, and I, I'm just thinking in my head that critics gave it like a zero because. Yeah. It was such lowbrow humor and stuff. Uh, I, but I me love as a way. kid, I wanted to play the actual oh, sport. Like we used to, like in the so neighborhood, cool. we would play like a version of it in our driveways. Yes, we would. Yeah, I, that's a sport that I wish would have gone uh, national or worldwide. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Two sets down. I got three more to go. Um, next up, I have 
2006, so we're living in 2006 here, 2006, same year as Benchwarmers, Nacho Libre with 1996's Kingpin. Why isn't that on my? Why wasn't that on my list? Why wasn't Kingpin on my list? Kingpin How did I forget your top that movie? Five comedy, <laughs> comedy. How did I forget that? Sports comedies. Wow. Um, I'm gonna go with Nacho being higher at a 65, and Kingpin a 63. Why would Why would you think Nacho Libre is higher? Because it was the same guy that did like Napoleon Dynamite, and I like th- just the the way the movie. I, it, this is the, kind of the way the critics kind of liked that style, maybe. So, Kingpin is higher. Oh, okay. At a forty-one percent. Get just, just stop. <laughs> Kingpin is a forty-one percent. This is trash. All-time classic movie. Uh, and the Nacho Libre is forty percent, so one percent lower. But both of those movies, yeah, I think when Nacho Libre came out, it at that point Napoleon Dynamite had caught on mm-hmm. of people like getting it, mm-hmm. so it wasn't as like knee jerk reaction when Nacho Libre came out as Napoleon. I thought it was a lot more like so. Um, um, you know, like I like listen, like the first couple times I saw I saw Napoleon, the first time I watched it. I was like, I need to watch that movie again because I think it was quietly hilarious and I don't realize that it was. And so I watched it again and it was way funnier the second time because I, <laughs> I was right. It was quietly hilarious. Nacho Libre, I think I've seen twice maybe. Mm. And if it wasn't Jack Black, I don't think that movie would be as good. Oh, by a mile. Yeah. He is the reason why that movie is interesting in any yeah, way. See, I don't know before. if that movie is that good or if he And it's not really good. rewatchable. Like no. I think I've That's seen Nacho Libre like two or yeah. three times. So. Yeah, the Kingpin. Oh man, so it's what classic, a classic. Fairly Brothers in their prime movie, mm-hmm. and like cast Woody Harrelson as like the lead. Nobody, I don't think anybody. Had, he wasn't, you know, he was like an ensemble kind of guy. It was mm-hmm. in. It was such a random ass weird movie. So and it's random. so freaking good. It's so weird, but so funny. Um, okay, cool. I got two more sets for you. First up, 1994. It's actually both of these movies are from 1994. 1994's Major League Two versus 1994's Angels in the Outfield. Angels in the Outfield's higher. 77. Major League Two is like a 50. Angels in the Outfield is higher. At a 31%. What is happening? <laughs> Dude, these movies that we love so much back in the day. Uh, Major League Two. 5%. 5% Major League Two. When I saw that, I was it like, was that, that bad? That bad? <laughs> That's yeah, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> so wow. I, said, so. I mean. Oh, man. Man. Wild. So that's, not, that's like this whole episode. Really opened my eyes to how critics see sports comedies. I guess. Which, which they don't really make. Think about how many sports comedies have come out in the last like 10 years. There's well, look really at, look not at our, a look at our lot. lists. Yeah. Look at our lists. Even your movies weren't like There's not they really were, anything they were older recent. too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, like early 2000s were, and they were newer than all of mine. Man, that's crazy. I, I, I think I don't it's know. Every, Maybe I, every 10 years. So like we were seeing a lot the outfield of, was like a fucking you know, Disney, awesome. Disney classic in the nineties. Like which they Joseph just Levitt. They just took it out of the vault and put it on Disney Plus. Did they? We tried to watch it in like week one of baseball season this spring. Yeah. And it was you could not get it anywhere digitally. Like you couldn't buy it anywhere, not on Amazon, nothing. And then out of nowhere we were the other couple weeks ago. So it popped up on Disney Plus. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. we're watching this. And Danny, yes, Joseph Gordon Lovett, Danny Glover, Danny Glover, Tony Danza, um, Tony Danza, um, Matthew McConaughey, Matthew McConaughey, which Before I he was, was famous. I didn't realize that. I think I was texting you when we were watching. It was like, holy shit, Matthew McConaughey is an angel in the, the outfield. They, isn't they, he the one they pick up? To yes, catch he's the, the one that yeah. flies and has that catch. So yeah. there is a ton. Christopher Lloyd, duh, he's like the main angel. Yes, which Ow. at that time, yeah, 
Call me out. Yeah. American League. He, he, uh, Christopher Lloyd was on fire in that little bubble of a time. Right. Yeah, like, like, yeah, from early 80s when he was on taxi to like late 90s. 90s yeah, yeah, a good 15 years. I mean, crushed it. Obviously, I mean, every, Back every, to the Future, Page Master, Adam's Family. Adam's family. I mean, did it have, does people remember Angels he was even Uncle Fester? Because he didn't look anything like him. He was, I remember when well, they cast him, I was, you know, like a kid. And it was like, oh, Christopher Lloyd's Uncle Fester. And everybody was like, Uncle Fester's a short, fat, bald guy. And then they <laughs> show tall, him. And he, skinny, crazy dude. You know, and they made it work. It was great. He was the bad guy in. Um, Roger Rabbit. He was the bad guy in Roger Rabbit. That's actually not what I was going to quote. Oh, I was yeah. going to quote the. Um, Fuck! What's what's the movie with the kid, Mister Wilson? Oh, Dennis the Menace. Yeah, he's the Dennis homeless. the Menace. Uh, yeah, he's the bad the guy. In, yeah, <laughs> Dennis the Menace. That's so, right. What a what a callback. Love Dang. that. Okay, there, Christopher Lloyd. We just did a whole episode up for you. Um. Okay. Yep. Angels in the outfield crushed Major League Two, and then last but not least, I have two thousand eight. Will Ferrell's semi pro versus 2002's basketball classic, like Mike. Like Mike's higher. Why? Why would you say that? Since it's a kids movie, I always feel like there's a little bit of a boost, and it's a kids movie. Like eh, versus a Will Ferrell movie. Uh like Mike. God, these have all been abysmally low. Um, <laughs> They've all been so low. Like Mike's a 54 semi pros a 48. Okay, you're pretty close. Mm. Like Mike is the higher movie at a 51%. Ooh, all right. Semi Pro is at a 23%. Mm. Which for me, this was one of those Will Ferrell movies that just didn't, it It was a big yeah. swing and miss. So. Yeah, I watched it once. I never watched it again. Um, Man, all these movies were, yeah, I think. Hate- are classically remembered. Like people remember these them, movies yeah. and mm-hmm. seen them all. <clears throat> um, but like, yeah, critics do not like comedies, well, sports comedies. So. Apparently not. Weird. Nice, crushed I, it. I like King, it, and we got to talk about a bunch of movies that we yeah, didn't get that to talk Kingpin about. Kingpin one, so. that, kind of, that pisses me off. I'm mad about that. Does it make you want to go watch the movie? Kind of. Yes, but it makes me want to watch like a bunch of Fairly Brothers movies in a row. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. God, they, they talk about another like just hot streak, right? Like Dumb and Dumber. Me, myself, and Irene, Kingpin. Oh man, what else did they do? Uh, did would you it, put me, myself, and Irene up there with Dumb and Dumber and Kingpin? I would. That mm. movie cracks me up. I think that's hilarious. That movie, it's some of the stuff. I think because I was the, how old I was when that came out, it wasn't what I was used to with Jim sure. Carrey, so I didn't get it. I yeah. obviously get it now, but as a kid, I was like, oh, this Stu- is. Did you ever see Stuck on You? Yes. Yeah. Fucking hilarious. Yeah. I love Stuck on You. Yeah. Great movie. Siamese Twins. Wait, uh, is it not Siamese Twins. Yeah, they're, yeah, Conjoined Twins. Siamese yeah. Conjoined Twins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, you I don't know. know what the, <laughs> I don't conjoined know what the, Twins is the politically, twins. politically correct. Classic. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, wow. Good episode. A lot of uh, sports movies, like. A lot of fun talking about sports comedies. I feel like we just took a time machine back to 90s and 2000s. Why are there not? Do they just not make sports comedies anymore? Or are they just not any good? Do, I there... can't remember what that came up. I saw like a video or someone talked about that recently. That like sports comedies just, they have been so bad. I think. Um, Sounds like these are all bad but... according to critics. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but they've been really terrible for like bottom line like it's not making anybody money so people Mm. don't make them so maybe it's because these guys that did sports comedies that were really good at it like adam sandler and will ferrell and they're old now and don't make sports comedy (laughs) you know i'm i'm trying to aged out i'm trying to think of a recent sports comedy that's come out that I just I can't think of anything off no, the top of my head. I can't either. I mean, like Beer Fest, I think was the newest movie you talked about. <laughs> yeah, and that's I mean, like honestly, that's borderline a sports movie. So, yeah, yeah. So some people would say it's not, but it has a training montage. Yeah. 
They've got a competition. There's a ball that's in it. Dodgeball came out maybe 15 years ago. Probably longer. It's probably 20 years old. And I'm just. Yeah, I think Dodgeball was semi pro, I think was the newest one we talked about in 2008. Crazy, though. I mean, just. It's wild. Yeah, I don't know. We're going to look into this. I'm going to look into this sports comedy fiasco. <laughs> yeah, now, now we must know. <laughs> now I'm bothered by it. But uh, oh anyway, uh, that takes us to the end of episode 60 of the Movie Dads podcast. Thanks for listening, everybody. We appreciate it. If you're watching us on YouTube, please click that like and subscribe. Click that bell. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. If you're not watching us on YouTube, hopefully you're listening to us on one of many podcast networks, such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, many other podcasts, iHeartRadio. Pod Chaser, I think, was one of the ones that were popular on. Whatever. That's the Australian one. Yeah, it's shout out be. to Australia and Germany and Singapore and everybody down, else down, down. in the United States that <laughs> listens to us. You can also find some of our short clips and videos on social media at Movie Dads Pod, on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. We're going to be back next week, episode 61. We're going to start spooky season because it's going to be spooky season it's going to be fall spooky season <laughs> uh, we're going to be in full swing of fall with an i believe can't believe you haven't seen it kyle which Steve- we haven't done in a long time no. i feel like it's been a um, while it's based on the stephen king short story directed by frank darabont who did green mile and shawshank redemption the horror classic the mist starring thomas <laughs> jane the Punisher himself. When you uh, said that, all I could think of was like, which one of these is not like the other? <laughs> Shawshank Redemption, Green Mile, The Mist? They're all directed by Frank Darabont and they're all based on Stephen King stories. So, Yeah, you, but two you know are really good, good and one is not fondly oh, no. remembered by the general public. What are you talking about? People don't love The Mist. Yes, they do. Nobody's you going should. back to watch The Mist, except I, us. You're full of shit. I am shock me. Yeah. Do, you, I'm you, looking th- forward to it. It has, and I think most people who've seen it will agree, the most gut-wrenching ending in a movie ever. Bring it on. What do you think The Mist is on Rotten Tomatoes? Uh, probably in the 40s. I'm going to look. Not even. It's not fondly remembered, according to you. It's not. 73. 73. Oh. Yeah. Certified fresh. Okay. It's good. It's good. It's a great movie, man. Okay. It's, oh, man. It's, it's good. Sign me up. Yeah. Very post. We're gonna, we got to watch it together this time. Yeah. Very. Oh, yeah. Because I want to see your face when it ends. Very, very <laughs> apocalyptic. Giggity. That's what she said. No, no, man. You're going to know. It's nuts. Uh, very apocalyptic. And the story does it. The short story it's based on does not end the same way the movie. That's totally oh, different. Fascinating. It's wild. Anyway, I'm I'm excited. I know I'm hyping it up. But that's episode 61 next week as we start spooky season. We're gonna have some good horror movies. Boom, 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 right in a row. Um, so you're gonna see some older movies over the course of the next month. I think we've got one new movie coming out. Um, that's a horror movie too that we're gonna watch. But uh, otherwise, it's gonna be some some classics in there. Um, classic, classics to us anyway, because it's our podcast. Anyway, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye.